Well, we're here on this Monday doing a PM on this old school carrier. It's a 30, 30 GT. This is a 210 ton uh, unit. Recip, two circuit compressors. Uh, we've got four of them all stacked back to back to each other. So we've been going through getting this knocked out. Uh, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, uh, these ought to look familiar. Uh, I've, I've had to do a lot of work out here over the last couple of years since I first walked into this account. Just uh, between total coil changeout, condenser fan replacements, compressor changeouts, rebuilds, all kinds of stuff. So uh, we're going through and getting it picked up, getting it cleaned up. See all kinds of oil residue very discouraging to see that kind of stuff uh, I had it's, it's my first time back in this account for several months uh, when I switched companies uh, it took us so it took a, a while before this account followed over and uh, I could see that during the time that I did not have it uh, it was not maintained to my standards so Let's see if we can get it back in order. Well, this is my on-call week. It is uh, Monday night. And this is just a reality you got to be prepared for, fellas. Um, you know, it's 11.30 at night. Uh, just actually got the baby down to sleep. Or was close to it. Uh, call comes in customer downtown's got a Got a server room. It's got a unit that's uh, down on it So, you know, we got to respond uh, Right now it's in the middle of this whole coronavirus uh, Situation so You know things haven't really slowed down for us at all, you know the city is going into a, uh, uh, a, a, a shelter in place, but HVAC is still an essential service that has to be provided. So for a situation just like this, so, so far we've stayed in business, stayed busy. You know, we haven't really been impacted that much. We've only had, we have had a lot of projects put on hold but the actual workload has, has still maintained us. Um, so that's been good. But anyway, like I say, this is just a, uh, a reality of our trade. You got to be ready for late nights when you're on call. I mean, yeah, I'm a supervisor, but at the same time, I'm on call because it's, it's one less week that the team has to be on call. And don't don't ever think about it or look at it as a uh, well you know I'm just gonna reach a certain level and I'm not gonna do it anymore well well that's nice and, and sure that would be great uh, at the same time that's not really a team mentality either so uh, anyway uh, just I hate big part of it I want this all to be real I want this I want you guys to um, I want you to see the reality of what we do uh, you know there, there's gonna be late nights like this where you just get a, a random call or you have a, a, a job that runs super late uh, you know I've, I've had them run through the night before and it just that's what happens you gotta be prepared for it, you know, physically, mentally, it's tough. And you just gotta do it. At the end of the day, you just gotta focus on what needs to be done and just do your job. That's all you can do. Anything else, you're just gonna make it harder on yourself. Uh, and it's something to prepare your, your families for. You know, if you have a family going in, into this trade, they need to be ready for nights like tonight. And... Uh, if you, whenever you're looking at having a family in the future, uh, you know, you've got to prepare them for this reality. You know, 
Uh, some of our, our, our apprentices don't really go through this, mostly based off of, you know, tech, technical training and, and um, just experience. You know, you never know what you're going to run into, and, and you need to have enough background. So if you are an apprentice coming into the trade, you know, don't get too comfortable not having to do things like on call. Uh, if, you, if you're not having to do it now, because there will be a day when you move into a, a service role where that's going to become a reality. Uh, I'm extremely blessed in the fact that, you know, my wife, is she understands. You know, she understands the trade. She doesn't like it. None of us like it. But she also knows that this is one of the sacrifices that we all make together. And... It's what we got to do. It's the end of the day. It's what we got to do. So, uh, appreciate it, guys. I'll, uh, I'll get some footage tomorrow. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, this is a fun one. So, I got here today to do the chiller PMs up on the roof. The automation system on the computer wasn't showing any comms with the um, chiller controllers which are these here and so I uh, got to looking into it came up these controllers were online I've, I've currently got the power pulled to them I'm resetting them um, anyway they were on, they they were online and the chiller plant was running but the uh, um, we didn't have any communication back to the uh, back to the computer so that we could actually control it because part of what I need to do for the PM is uh, these chillers run lead legs and I have to um, To get the pumps which is your pump VFDs to get the pumps and everything to run properly uh, It's easier to override from the computer get the whole plant online together and then um, uh, Oh then let it control from there then I can cycle out the chillers what I need to as I need to uh, until I'm done then I can let everything go back to normal well anyway uh, after about two hours of troubleshooting this automation system uh, it looks like this Jace here which is kind of the the centralized brain that connects all of the sub controllers um, it's not communicating back to the uh, to the to the main network um, to, to let us through so it's having some issues so I've got my automation team on their way out to check it uh, verify it but more than likely we're thinking this has probably gone out uh, now what I'm left with is I'm trying to get these since we were troubleshooting and the work we were doing now my plant controllers are not wanting to um, uh, to bring the plant on because they even though they don't have network comms, what they should do is they should run the preloaded schedule and and whatever was in there before it lost comms and started having trouble. So uh, it was having it didn't want to do that at first. Granted, the chillers were acting a little crazy because then the pumps started coming in and out. So I've got overrides at all my relays. Uh, these are for my pump commands and my chiller start stops so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to do those overrides basically right here at the controller what should happen is uh, you know giving these controllers off long enough at least 60 seconds I usually give them a few minutes uh, I'll reestablish power and then um, right now it's only got uh, chiller one to run as the primary so what I did was the pump speed for chiller two I tied it into chiller one's analog output so both pumps will run and cycle together since I've got them both uh, manually on um, anyway just one of the things you run into sometimes this is technically turned into a service call which I'm getting ready to switch back over to billing for the PM uh, just the 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 plant lost comms yesterday afternoon late. Uh, they act, actually the engineer called me um, yesterday evening uh, and and was telling me that 
the the comms went out on the chiller plant so i was going to look at it when i got here and you know once it once all the issues revealed themselves you know it quickly turned into a service call this is in the mechanical room this is the air handler for the build for the fifth floor um so this is inside the mechanical room for uh uh the fifth floor itself and then right above us is the roof here's all the controls for the for the fifth floor air handler so yep yep fun stuff